Hey, what's up guys? Jason Worthy here. Just wanted to let you know that you can find me on Facebook as Jason Worthy, but also type in the only worthy realtor because I am the only worthy realtor. But don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's like my man Lewis's channel, I-M-O-L-T. All right, I'm going to spell it for you again. I-M-O-L-T. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> With a pinch of crutch, catches with the jab. I'm Floyd May, my defense is nice. Crafted by a Mac, I'm embedded to get the cheese. Genius with the beats, this pop off, and I move with ease. Okay. Yeah. Uh, real estate, aka P. Cantan, is what we like to call me. <laughs> <laughs> Things me and Jason are going to just kind of talk about is real, like the, is the importance of real estate buying your own home, either whether you're a first home buyer or three times. Just some of the things that mistakes people might have or some of the misconceptions and all that. So like Jason, like how how and how your what's your opinion? Like how important it is it to owning your own home versus what's some of the advantages of buying instead of like renting and, and et cetera? Well, my opinion, the the biggest thing is is really just a place that you can call your own. I mean, it's, it's privacy. You, you own your own home. You're not paying rent for somebody else. Um, it's your own personal space that you can, you can call your own. Um, not to mention, you know, you look at it as, as an investment. Um, you know, you, you buy something today at a really good price, uh, five, 10 years from now, you know, with appreciation, you can make money off the sale of the home. And it'd be good because, you know, whatever money that you make off of the appreciation, you know, that's money that you can use towards a down payment on a on a bigger home. So, I mean, it's, you know, like I said, it's primarily you're looking at, at that privacy, just, just having something to call your own that nobody can take from you. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's an investment. And so, and you are a real estate agent. How long have you been in real estate? Five years now. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And uh, so if someone is want you to be their real estate agent, how can they find you? Or what's the best way to? So you can find me on Facebook. Just obviously search Jason Worthy. Um, also, I have a business page, The Only Worthy Realtor. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but hey, it's true. I am the only worthy realtor in town. Um, but hey, you can always shoot me a text message or pick up the phone, call me, 910-409-7655. Um, I hang my license at the Property Shop International Realty right here in Wilmington. But yes, it's a small boutique firm right here in uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, you know, just yeah, hit me up. You know, we're we're dedicated to helping our clients, whether we're we're helping them buy or sell. We're a small firm, you know, and we're we're highly focused on giving that personal interaction. You're never going to be treated like a number when you work with us, or even when you work with me. Because hey, I'm the only worthy realtor in town, so. You're gonna get that dedication from the good old boy worthy. Yeah. And Jay, and not Jason, not only and property. What is it? Property. Yep, the property shop. The property shop. Realty. Yeah, they not. Jason was working for them and helped me buy this place where we are actually recording that right now. But the seller was also a client of the uh, property, so I right. definitely uh, endorsed them. <laughs> uh, so what some of the what some of the the things that people don't realize or get wrong when looking for a house. Like what, what, what was some, like after you come to the actual realization that you want to buy a house, what, what should step one typically be? So step one, um, even if you're just thinking of home ownership, um, the first step, obviously, is to talk real real estate agent, primarily me, of course, um, to find out if it's even possible, right? So the first thing that I'm going to have you to do will be to speak with a lender, all right? You know, because a lot of people get into this thinking that, you know, I want to go out and look at houses first. You can't do that. The first thing you have to do is to speak with the lender to find out if you're actually eligible to purchase a home and purchasing a home is it's really not that difficult to, to actually well let me step back a little bit to go through that process it's not as difficult as people may think that it is 
Um, it's really just a conversation that you have with the lender and submitting some information. It doesn't cost a penny. Uh, it's just a little bit of your time and the lender will run the numbers and have a conversation with you. And the lender that I use, which is uh, primarily Omar Washington, which you've used them as well, um, you know, he'll give you realistic, you know, expectations. You know, if, if he can't get you approved now, uh, what I love about him is that he will formulate a game plan to tell you exactly how long it will take for you to get there. Um, but at the end of the day, I didn't mean to get off, off subject here too much, but I mean, really, the biggest thing is, is you have to talk to a lender first, right? A lot of people like to go out and look at houses first. That's wrong, right? Because at that point, I hate to say it, but you're wasting people's time. Yeah, because you know what you want, but you don't know if you can afford it. You right. know how that's going to translate into monthly payments. You know, like I did that. I was a, yep. I was a Zillow warrior at first. You <laughs> Nothing know. wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, but it's just kind of they, they kind of see what's out there. So it's right. like, so what do you think about websites like Zillow and I'm sure the other ones? Are they helpful or do they are they hurtful to what you do? Um, I think it's kind of both. And that's just my personal opinion. Um, I mean it. They all have their pros, they all have their cons, but I always tell my folks, if you're using Zillow, use Zillow. It's, it's doing a great job for, for what it's set up for. It's free information, you don't have to sign up for anything, but I always tell people, if you find something, come back and confirm it first. Because a lot of times, with the way that the algorithm is set up, Zillow may show you a house that it, that it thinks it's, that's gonna go on the market, and it may not even be up for sale. Um, so come to me with the address, I'll double check it, Sometimes it's not all is sometimes it is for sale, but it may actually be pending and Zillow may not be updated showing that information. So at the end of the day, I say continue using those websites. That's what they're there for, because a lot of the real estate websites after certain clicks, certain amount of clicks, you got to sign up. And I'm sure, you know, nobody wants to do that. Use those sites. And when you're working with me, just come back and, and let's just verify it before you get happy about it. That's all. Okay. All right, so step one, get a lender. Mm -hmm. No, step one, hire you. After step two, That's right. get you get approved for a certain amount of money, mm -hmm. and uh, then you kind of know what 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 you're looking at because you might right. you might be looking at three hundred thousand dollar houses and you might only have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget. Can I tell you how many times this happened? Yeah, you know, it's happened a lot. Or you have to come out of your pocket X amount because the bank's only going to cover you so much. So then you got to find just a hundred thousand dollars laying around. And another thing that I've, I find that a lot of people are they kind of get intimidated by intimidated by are going to be down payments. So you know, a lot of people think when I uh, when I initially talk to them that they have to have twenty percent down. That's not always the case. Um, you know, there are programs out there, not even programs, there are options out there that will allow you to put down as little as 3% or even 3.5%. So you don't have to have tens of thousands of dollars saved up to purchase a home. Even USDA loan, that's 100% financing, right? So there are options available to help people get into homes with little to no money down. And then, of course, the way that you um, structure your offer when it's time to purchase a home there's a good chance that whatever money that you may put up for, let's just say, what we call earnest money, uh, which is your skin in the game, you know, there are ways to get that money back, but it's all in how we structure structure the actual offer to purchase when it comes to go to, to buy the house. So that's when a good real estate agent comes in, in hand to be able to structure those deals, or is that standard mm -hmm. practice? Um, kind, of, kind of a little bit of both. You know, it's going to take the agent um, to, to be able to see if the the house itself will actually allow for so case in point so i had a, a client um i think it was uh, last year i was able to get them back the money that they put up so we lost a little bit on the sale of their existing home at the time just because it needed a lot of work and i explained to them okay well this is how we're going to have to structure the loan because they were going to use that money to put down on their new home or to help pay for the closing costs um, so it kind of took away from the money that they had. So I'm like, all right, well, this is what we need to do. Knowing what they needed to do is, is of course, the first step. Um, then we had to find a house that, one, was priced correctly, and that would allow us to go in and say, hey, we're going to give you X amount of dollars for the house, but we need X amount of dollars back at closing. 
Um, so yes, it does take an experienced agent to, to be able to see that you can actually structure that within the home that you're going to be purchasing, but also do it in such a way that where the, the client can actually get money back at the table. So what, because of what we put up, um, in the beginning, and I knew how much that, how much the lender would allow them to get back. Um, I believe they walked away. They actually walked away with about $5,000 in equity, um, positive equity in the house. And I think it was $2,000 back at closing. Oh, wow. Yep. So every, every dollar that they put up, they got back because the seller paid for all of the closing and whatever money they put up, which was the $2,000, they got back and put that in their pockets. Oh, nice. Yep. Uh, so one thing... You know, we're we're in North Carolina and you're you're obviously a black male real estate agent. What name uh I'm assuming there is some hurdles with that, just also growing up in North Carolina. Can you speak towards that? Yeah, I can I can speak towards that. Um it's different. Uh, and, I, and I hate to say it this way, but I, I feel like a lot of African Americans look at real estate as being a white man's game, so to speak, because it is predominantly white. Um, it's difficult at times because a lot of times, more times than not, uh, a lot of settings that I that I find myself in when it comes to real estate, it is primarily um, whites. And a lot of times, you know, it's, it's very few minorities. And in a lot of cases, it's actually I've actually been probably the only one. Um, but, you know, what makes it difficult, though, is because, and I can't necessarily say that it's a black and white thing. Sometimes it's just a behavioral thing. Um, but, you know, I find myself in situations where, you know, I'm overlooked, I'm ignored, I'm looked at crazy, you know, and it's, and it's hard for you to separate, okay, the you know is is there a race issue here, or are you just looking at me because I'm I'm different? So I mean even you know a lot of cases there there might be agents that I've done business with or I've been in the same firms with them and so they they recognize me they know me but at the same time it's just like I get ignored. Um, but you know it's it is very difficult. Um, you know I've I've been in situations where I walk into a house, uh, being a, what we call an on-site agent in a new community. And I'll introduce myself, you know, hey, I, I work for the company, um, you know, I'm here to do this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to come and introduce myself. And they look at me sideways and like, okay, so why are you here? And I'm like, well, I just explained to you that I work for the company and I came here to do X, Y, and Z. Okay. And then sometimes it just kind of leaves, it stays at that. So, you know, you often, as an African-American, you often wonder, like, okay, what was that about? You know, but... It is a little difficult. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie. It, it gets, you know, gets a little weary at times because you, you're constantly wondering if, if, you know, if you're going to be a victim of, of the race game. So, I mean, I guess that's the easiest way I could explain that. So, do you feel that you get more African-American or, or black leads because you're black or less? I actually get a mix. Um, I haven't worked with more of one than the other. And I think that primarily is because of the type of person that I am. Um, you know, I don't lean more towards black or white. You know, I've always been the middle guy. So I don't, I can't say that I get more black leads than white leads. I, I honestly believe that, you know, looking back at, at the clients that I've done business with, it's literally almost half and half. Okay. Would you encourage, uh, would you encourage uh, people of color to get into real estate? Like, is, the, is there a market for, uh, like, is that, the, is that a market for people of color that, that's being oh, yeah. ignored? Oh, yeah, definitely. I would strongly suggest that, you know, people of color do get into real estate because it's not a white man's game. It's anybody's game. I mean, yeah, you, you know, just like anything that we do. You know, you may run into adversity because of the color of your skin, but, you know, it's all in how you react to it as a person that makes the difference. Um, not to mention, you know, you've got people out there nowadays where, um, you know, racism is being frowned upon and people, they have your back. You know, if they know what's going on, a lot of folks will have your back. But, 
I mean, there aren't many African Americans in the industry as it is. And I have had conversations with African Americans that say, you know, I want to do business with an African American. And I can, you know, I can't do anything but respect that. But, you know, being that there's not many of us, there's not many not many options for them and they may and some of them may not know who to go to and they look at a, a white realtor and they're like i don't want to do business with them and then they go on to never buy a house because they think it's a white man's game and they don't realize that you know there are african americans in the industry here in wilmington that can help them and not only african-american realtors there's also african-american lenders because yes you know the what the company you were just mentioning um movement mortgage yep movement you know, Omar Washington, another yep. person of color. And uh, Sean Simmons. And Sean Simmons. Shout out to him. So what? what's some other stuff? Uh, so like what's like far as, I guess, like starting to build that generational wealth and buying a home, what's something that you recommend looking for? Like uh, when not, not not necessarily your first home, but like when you, you're just you're trying to step it up like and play the real estate game like what what's some recommendations of things to look for or do you have recommendations like uh or do you even believe in that real estate game where like buying and flipping houses like what's your take on that because a lot of people talk about that as a way to get not 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 necessarily, not necessarily like a get rich scheme but right but to make uh, money fast so make, or, or make and just you know but then not to get off too much on a tangent, but I look at billionaires and millionaires. It's very, usually people who have a diverse portfolio. Only a small right. percentage of it is real estate. Right. But I think real estate helps to get there. But I think once you get there, you kind of get into other stuff. Other stuff. Yeah. I don't know. That's how I think. But what do you? How do you feel about that? Um, I think I think it's good to do, but I think people go about it the wrong way. So how's the, what is the right way of going about it? So for starters, everybody thinks that um, when you come into real estate, when you get into the investment, investment side of things, that you're going to come in, you're going to lowball the heck out of everybody. Well, that's, that's not going to always work. Sometimes it does, but it's, it's, it's what we call a seller's market now where there aren't many options. So you go in and you try to lowball somebody on a property, you're going to miss out. Um, because, you know, chances are they're going to wait. Somebody else is going to come and give them a much higher offer. Now, if the house is in shambles, that's one thing. Um, but even still, you know, it, it is going to start with you, one, buying the house at the right price. All right. And it's really, you know, you have to, you come into this game with one of two mindsets. Either you're going to be a holder, uh, which is an investor that actually buys property to put up for rent. Um, or you're going to be a flipper, which is somebody that comes in and buys a house and, and gets rid of it. They don't sit on it, and that's where you make fast money. Being a holder um, is good money, like when a pandemic hits or when a rent, uh, recession hits and people stop buying houses. Well, if you're a holder and you've got all these houses uh, up for rent, well, you, you're, you're crushing it now because now all of your homes are rented uh, because nobody's buying houses. Everybody's looking for a place to stay because they're holding on to their money. They're afraid that the market's going to crash and whatever money they invest into the real estate market is just going to go away. Um, but when you get into flipping, it's quick money. But what people don't realize is that it's you, you can't get into flipping houses and slapping lipstick on a pig, as they say. Well, you, you come in, you buy a house for 50 grand and you just go in and you put new, new paint on and you just cover up all the imperfections um, and then try to sell the house for three times what you what you put into it. That's not the case. Um, you know, it's, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people come in and, and, and try to, they buy a house at a low price and then they don't have the money or the capital to, to do the right upgrades to the house. And then they end up losing money on the back end because they, they've done all these so-called upgrades to the house and they've done the wrong upgrades. They put the money into the wrong places and they bought a house in the wrong neighborhood. Nobody wants to spend that kind of money. Um, so I mean, it, it, it really, the way I look at it is this, if you're going to come into the real estate game and you're going to buy a house that needs work, all right, buy a house that needs work, but you got to have the capital, the backing 
to do the right upgrades and it has to be in the right location. Uh, and you have to make sure that you're going to be able to get your money out of it on the back end on the sale of the house. Because otherwise, all the work that you've done, you've done for nothing. And you've got to do it the right way. You can't just hire your cousin Joe from down the street to come in and slap some paint on the wall and do a crappy job on the floors and expect to get top dollar for the house. And I see that happen far too often. Okay. All right, so any last words, anything that we didn't touch on that you want to touch on as far as real estate? Uh, no, nah, I think we, uh, the, the biggest thing that I, 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 would, I would highlight would be, you know, don't be afraid to, to reach out to a lender uh, or even myself just to have a conversation. It doesn't cost you anything. I can't tell you how many times I've dealt with folks that, um, didn't think that they could qualify for a house and they find out that they do qualify um, or they think that they're that they've got to put down X amount of dollars to to get into the home and they qualify for 100 percent financing. So, you know, you got to have a conversation, um, you know, you you're, you're see out there where um, rent may be eleven hundred dollars a month. And you can, you know, they'll say that, you know, your mortgage, you why pay eleven $1 hundred dollars a month when you can pay, well, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Why pay eleven $1 hundred dollars a month in rent when you can pay eleven $1 hundred dollars a month in mortgage? People are not going to look at that as being a wash, so to speak, or as in, enticing of buying their own home because I'm spending the same kind of money. But there are cases where people can come in and actually get a cheaper mortgage than what they are paying in rent. Yeah, because when you're paying rent, you're paying somebody else's right. mortgage, typically. You know, right. So, and usually put more in their pocket. Exactly. So, I mean, I encourage it either way you look at it, even if you're not saving money, because just like you said, it's yours. It's your house. You sit on it for a couple of years. You sell it, make a few bucks off of it, buy another house. But there are cases where you can get into a house and actually pay less than what you're paying in rent. No. All right, so again, my name is Jason Worthy. You can find me on Facebook. Just simply type in Jason Worthy. Boom, pop up. Um, obviously, the only tall, dark, and handsome one that you see on there. Uh, but also, my business page is the only worthy realtor because I am the only real worthy realtor in town. Uh, but also, don't forget to subscribe to my man Lewis's channel, I M O L T. Again, it's I M O L T. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Victory within striking distance. That's MMA. This the last straw to back.